Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tom T. Square Taylor here with Dave Ellis from 343, and we are at the Halo 4 Waypoint Community Party. So, Halo 4, what's different than the last Halos? Well, there's a lot. I mean, here at the show, if you saw the press briefing on Monday morning, we showcased uh, the single player for the first time where we introduced an all new class of enemy, the Prometheans. Uh, we showcased the Promethean Knight, Promethean Watcher, and the Promethean Crawler. And we think people are going to be really excited to play against these enemies. Uh, they're not the Covenant. They're very different. They have their own unique style, their unique visuals, and the unique uh, sandbox elements that they bring to the Halo experience. It seems like the hardest AI in my opinion so far in Halo. I know the Elite Covenants and the, and the Hunters were super hard, but these guys are really aggressive. Let's talk multiplayer a little bit. Can you tell me a little bit about the maps that are going to be coming out? Yes, yeah, so here at the show, we are uh, we brought three maps this week to uh, E3. The first, of course, is uh, Haven, which you may have seen previously, had a different name before. Uh, it is a map that's set in the uh, clouds of uh, Requiem, which is the uh, planet where the main campaign takes place in Halo 4. Uh, it's a kind of a small to medium-sized map. Uh, it's mostly circular. It's multi-level. Uh, it has some uh, man cannons that shoot you out to the middle. Uh, but despite it being a small to medium-sized map, it actually has some pretty long sight lines. It has a unique, uh, really bright, airy kind of Forerunner style to it. Very, very different than past Forerunner stuff. Uh, second map that we're showing off is a Drift, which uh, you also have seen before. It has a new name. Also, it has been uh, pretty updated graphically from the first time we've shown it. Uh, it actually takes place on board a uh, kind of a derelict UNSC mining vessel that's in a near uh, near orbit around this gas giant. And the UNSC has sort of taken it over uh, to, to use it for the war effort. So um, it's part of it on the combat deck of the Infinity. Uh, you're going to battle against other Spartans to earn experience and unlock new uh, items within our progression system. Uh, the third map, and it's actually brand new, we've never shown it before, uh, is a, a fairly large uh, map that's uh, great for vehicular combat. It's called Longbow, and it takes place on a mysterious kind of frigid environment. You have some uh, kind of mass drivers that used to be used to shoot uh, cargo and stuff from the surface of a planet out to space from the ground, and you see some really cool stuff, has an amazing skybox, but it's great for vehicular combat, and it features our updates to the Warthog, the Mongoose, and the Ghost. That sounds sick. Now, speaking of things falling from the sky, I just got a chance to play, and I went on a little killing spree there, I'm not going to lie. It was a lot of fun. And I got a chance to use a sword. It's back to its old lunging. You can definitely go on some serious sprees. But once you do go on a spree, what happens? So what you play to here tonight is something we call Infinity Slayer. And it's our update to the classic uh, Team Slayer, uh, and, and it's like kind of our take on it for Halo 4. Uh, and we've changed uh, two main things, one of which you talked about, which uh, we refer to as the Ordnance System, and I'll talk about that in a second. First and foremost, we've changed the scoring system in Infinity Slayer. In the past, uh, scoring in Team Slayer was simply kills, and that's it. And that's how you counted it. But we, we kind of felt there were other things that people were contributing to teamwork uh, that maybe they weren't getting credit for. So if you have a teammate who may be using a plasma pistol and you're doubling up with them with like a DMR, BR, and they're stripping shields and you're getting headshots, you'd get all the glory with your kill. The guy with the plasma pistol, who's got a rough job, wasn't getting any credit for it. So now we want to give that person some points as well. So if they get that assist, if they've done a good job of helping you out to get that kill, then they should, should get some points for it. So uh, you get points for everything you do to help your team and contribute to your effort to take out the other team. You get them for kills, you get them for all the other things. You get them double kills, triple kills, killing sprees. You get them for all kinds of stuff. Um, and once you do that, you can use your points to actually uh, build up your ordnance meter. Once you do that, you'll see a, a thing uh, pop up in the middle of your HUD that's shaped like a directional pad. There's a reason for that. Because you use your directional pad, either left or right or down on the D-pad, to call in either power weapons, new grenades, or also power-ups, which are actually bringing back and actually making a focus of the Infinity Slayer experience. Uh, you may have noticed that we had an overshield, which you may have played in a past Halo games. We also have some new power-ups that people have never seen before. One is a speed boost, which basically turns you into I don't know, a Spartan version of a Corvette, Corvette where you can go from 0 to 60 instantly. So you're, you're instantly really fast, you don't need to sprint, even though you have sprint, but it also allows you to become a strafing machine. You can just move faster than anyone else, especially if you have someone who's using the hard light shield, you're going to run right past them, sneak around behind them, give them an assassination. The other is also something called the damage boost. And what that does, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, allows you to do more damage with your weapons. Uh, every one of these power-ups, whether it's the overshield, damage boost, or speed boost, it lasts for about 30 seconds. And you also have a very clear visual indicator when you have it. And also, everyone who's running around can actually see that you have it. So, for example, the speed boost, your visor, a uh, whole HUD turns bluish, and you also leave like a blue trail behind you because you're moving so fast, you're kind of bending light a little bit. The overshield, uh, you show shimmer is like a green, so you show up, you're very easy to see from a distance. So you, if you jump into a situation with someone with an overshield, you know it ahead of time. So we're trying to give you a lot of visual information. Uh, and of course you have damage boost. Well, you're pretty deadly, so we make you red. 
All right, now let's talk about loadouts because I noticed there's five custom loadouts, but three of them are locked. Is that going to be something that's really big? Is the amount of times that you play, the, the amount of time that you're putting into the game, is going to be potentially what you are unlocking? Yeah, so the reason we're introducing loadouts in, in Halo, quite honestly, is you always had the eternal struggle of what's your starting weapon. In Halo 2, it was the SMG versus the BR, AR versus BR in Halo 3, and of course, even in even Halo Reach, where there was choices in loadouts and stuff, you still had that. Is it AR, pistol, DMR? What are you going to start with? Like, quite honestly, I, we want to get people to play the tools to actually craft the loadout to suit their particular play style. And our goal in our design document is actually to make the weapons as balanced as possible. So it doesn't matter what weapon you're using, uh, you, you're going to be equally lethal. I love it. I love the loadouts. I've only had five minutes to play Halo 4, and I'm totally addicted. I can't wait to get this game, and I can't wait to play on Xbox Live. Dave, thank you so much. Thank you. We're excited to be here at E3, and we've been blown away by the response so far. And I just want to say everyone out there, they haven't seen anything yet.